Hi everyone and welcome back to another Tech Bytes review. Today we are going to be taking a look at the Razer Huntsman Elite. I know this is a, a very popular keyboard. There's been plenty of reviews out there. Uh, so we'll try to keep this one short and sweet, tell you what I like about it, tell you what I don't like about it. And uh, at the end, we'll, we'll give a quick summary and see if this one's worth picking up to add to your collection. All right, now to kick off the review, we'll dive in with the typical build quality, but I did think it was worth mentioning and, and doing. Granted, this has already been unboxed, but I put it back together the best I could. Um, in true Razer fashion, their, uh, their products always come with really fantastic quality packaging, and I apologize for the glare up here. Um, but uh, as you can see, they have, uh, we'll see if I can get this in the, in the shot here, but they have a nice little packaging part right up here with uh, the little thank you note from, from the team, the R&D department, uh, and it's a nice little plastic cover. You, know, you have your, your space where the cables and everything comes in. So I'll go ahead and take this out of the box. All right, and here we are with everything unboxed. Uh, as you can see, there's really only two main components. I, I believe it comes with a keycap puller, but there's the, uh, the main keyboard and then a detachable wrist rest as well. And I, I don't know if you could see at the bottom here, um, but the, the LED glow does come all the way around the keyboard. Looks really cool if you're staring at it from the side and, and you can see this go all the way across. Um, so just, just a nice, uh, neat little extra feature. Um, one thing to note, and I thought this was important to mention before we dive into the, the meat of the review, um, it is a two USB uh, type of keyboard. Uh, I believe one is for data transfer for the actual key presses, and then the other is going to be for, uh, for the, the lights and the lighting, um, specifically to support uh, this additional wrist rest piece. So um, for the purposes of this review, I'll, I'll keep this off. Uh, just because it, it gets in the way. Um, so let's talk build quality. Uh, first things first, what's the weight of the keyboard like? Uh, I can tell you it's it, it does have a nice hefty feel. Um, this is what I believe to be aluminum uh, up at the top. I'm not sure if you can see it's kind of painted in a nice uh, matte black finish. Um, the, the weighting itself, it's, it's nothing super impressive. It's not to the, uh, to the quality of like a, an IBM model M where it's like five pounds where the keyboard, I'd say this is probably somewhere around two to three pounds. Uh, the, the metal plate does give it a, a nice solid feel for, for the top part. It also feels nice clicking the, uh, the keys against the metal plate. Uh, but the back leaves a little bit to be desired. Um, it's just standard, typical plastic, nothing fancy. Um, you do have your rubber feet all the way across, um, so pretty pretty standard stuff there. I guess if you were going from a, from an overall feel uh, point of view, I'd give it maybe a maybe a six or a seven out of ten. Um, there there's absolutely better cases out there. Uh, this one, the, the really the only thing going for it is the fact that it's it has an aluminum plate at the top. Other than that, it's right on par with your standard DOS keyboards or any other big box manufacturer that's producing these things. Um, that being said, we'll, uh, we'll jump into the keys because the key press, this does have the, uh, their optical switch, the Razer optical switch, which is, uh, if you were to take one of these off, it's going to be the, the purple on the top. So let's see if, if that's clear. Uh, there it is. That's better. Um, so you can see it is this, uh, this nice purple switch, which is, uh, which is optical. Um, all the LEDs are kind of embedded here in the top portion. And uh, and the switch feel itself is a, probably a little bit lighter uh, than a, a brand new Cherry MX Blue. I do have um, some brand new MX Blues that I just installed on another keyboard uh, that I'll compare this up against. But um, overall, it's a very light, uh, not, not quite on par with reds, but a very light uh, key press. It's, it, it is kind of uh, easy to, to misclick sometimes given how light it is. But again, using this for gaming, which is pretty much what I use this for exclusively, um, it is a nice feel uh, for, for kind of the, the featherweight switches. Uh, and, and yes, you do mistype um, from time to time. But again, if you're using this for gaming and, and not a primary typist keyboard, you don't really need too much of that tact tactility. And, and to be quite honest, it, I think it would, would really impact your gaming. So from from a, uh, from a switch feel, it's definitely lighter than a Cherry MX Blue. There's not as much tactility there, um, but the, the click is, uh, is noticeable and, and I think adds more than a, than a true linear switch or anything along those lines. So I, I actually do really like the key feel. Um, one thing to note, <laughs> I, I use this keyboard probably six months straight. 
Um, at the time, I was playing a lot of World of Warcraft. Um, it it really hurts your fingers after a while. And I know that sounds weird, but the keys don't really bottom out. Um, there's almost a tiny bit of mush. There's like resistance when you get to the very bottom of the key press. And if you're using a, a finger that's not necessarily used to it, like say your middle finger, um, and you're holding either the W key or the S key to, to move forward for an extended period of time, it really, I mean, I'm talking maybe after 30, 45 minutes, holding that button down for an extended period, it really gives you finger cramps. Um, I, I switched out boards just to make sure it wasn't just my hands cramping up from extended use. And absolutely, it came from this board. Um, it, it hurts my fingers. I, I don't know what else to say about it. It's, uh, I, I wanted to love it. I think the switches are cool. They're unique. Um, I, I like the featherweight aspect, but my God, it really hurts. I mean, you have to stretch your hands out by the time you're done using the damn thing. So it's, uh, it is what it is. So let's, uh, let's continue on the build quality review. You have pretty much a standard set of functionality on the back. So you have your, uh, your flip up switches that have come in two stages, similar to just about every keyboard these days. Uh, we have rubber feet, six of them, which is great. Uh, really no movement at all, uh, from, from this keyboard when you get it down on your desk. Um, you, you do have a nice volume knob. It's, it's not the best feeling in the world. It's, it's a little rickety. I mean, it's, it's in there nice and tight, but it's, it, it, it is what it is. It's, it's kind of a cheap part. These buttons for the volume, let's take a look at them. They are one of the cheapest switches I've seen in a while. They're just giant plastic um, cylinders with just a, a really crappy switch underneath. I, I don't know how else to say it. Um, key switches. Uh, I believe this is ABS plastic. It's not PBT, so it's it's cheap. I'm sorry, key uh, key caps. It's uh, cheap ABS, so nothing nothing to write home about there. Um, this does have, if we look at the top up here, um, and the the legend down here at the bottom, it does have on the fly macro recording. Not a big feature for me. Um, even using uh, playing games that where a lot of people do have macros and. And use them. I uh, I never found any use for it, so uh, just just my two cents on it. Um, I, I think a lot of the selling points. If you're if you're in it for the macros, great. It has it. I never have honestly met somebody that that loves them, um, but they're there. Uh, overall, solid feel, mostly due to the aluminum plate at the top. Other than that, nothing really uh, stands out to me. All right, now moving on to the typing experience. Um, it's it, it's really great uh, initially. Uh, so let's let's do just a quick little typing demo and just do a hello world. It, it's very satisfying. Um, and, and personally, the the sound of it to me is is almost has a bit of a thud when when it hits the bottom. And it's uh, the the click plus the thud is reminiscent of like a Cherry MX Blue with almost a bit of the HHKB thock at the bottom. I mean, it's just, it's, it's awesome. Uh, one of my personal favorite sounding keyboards, I just, it just really sounds like a typewriter to me and I, I, I love it. Um, there, it's not real echoey due to the case design. Uh, typing on this thing sounds really cool. Um, people are gonna notice it, but it's not an annoying high pitched click. It's just a real mellow tactile feedback click that you're getting out of it. Uh, love it. Um, that's pretty much where the, where the love ends with this keyboard, uh, from a typing standpoint, unfortunately, um, if you're using it to game and you're playing something that doesn't involve too many key presses, I am thinking like a, like a MOBA or something along those lines, or, or even like a, uh, like an ARPG, like a Diablo or something where you're just hitting abilities, um, relatively infrequently and you're moving primarily with the mouse. I, I think this would be okay. Um, but if you are playing a game like an FPS or, um, or an MMORPG or something where you're holding keys down to move, it hurts and it hurts bad. Um, it hurts really badly. Uh, I, I mean, serious finger cramping after 30 to 45 minutes of use and, and I'd have to switch over to another board or, or just stop for the night. Um, the, the misclicks for me, if you're looking at this as kind of an all-purpose keyboard, I'd say look again. Not to mention it does, unfortunately, due to how light these switches are. Um, it has the issue where it will actuate and register a key press, even though you didn't press it twice. And it's extremely annoying, especially when you compound that with the fact that this is a 200 plus dollar keyboard. Um, for what you get, it, it really, 
really is lacking. As I mentioned previously, uh, I, I do have a comparison of some Cherry MX Blues, so let me pull that over. This keyboard is nothing special. It was or is a DOS keyboard that I've since taken apart. Uh, we have uh, Cherry MX Browns on the outside, Cherry MX Blues on the inside. Uh, these are really, really new uh, blues. I think they've only been in use for maybe two weeks, so it should be a nice comparison. So we'll start with the Razer Huntsman Elite. So that pretty much wraps up everything I, I really wanted to cover about the Razer Huntsman Elite. Uh, that, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, this has been reviewed uh, a million times over. There are people praising its name because it's the next best thing from Razer. Um, I just wanted to give you guys a, a real down-to-earth review. Um, talk about the things it's good at and talk about a lot of the negatives as well because it, it does have its fair share more than most keyboards, unfortunately. And that concludes today's review, everyone. Thank you again for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, I'm trying to switch this up to do like one keyboard, then one mouse, then one keyboard, uh, potentially some new series coming down the pipeline. So uh, keep watching those videos. Uh, keep leaving those comments uh, if you if you like what you see. Um, or if you have requests for any kind of keyboard or, or mouse that you'd like to see me review. Uh, all feedback is good feedback. Really appreciate it. And thank you again for watching.